Several months ago, I did do a Nintendo 64 tutorial. However, Nintendo 64 emulation hasn't been great for a really long time and progression is slow. However, there is a little bit of a dark horse in this race that you may not realize is a great alternative. Nintendo's Virtual Console service, for those who don't know, is available on the Wii, the Wii U, and the 3DS, and is essentially official emulation. It's emulators developed by Nintendo, and in some cases, the ROMs that they used are actually found online. People found this out by dumping the Virtual Console ROMs, opening up the ROM, and looking at the headers, and finding that they matched headers of known good public ROMs that are available. So, in a, in a sense, Nintendo uses emulation for its benefit, and as it should. And we can use this to our benefit. So today on Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials, I'll show you how to emulate the Nintendo 64 Virtual Console on the Wii through Dolphin. So yes, we are emulating an emulator and performance is actually better than just natively emulating Nintendo 64 directly. So in the description below, there will be a link to this gbatemp.net wiki page, and it is essentially uh, just a quick compatibility list, and it's not the most exhaustive compatibility list, nor is it the only compatibility list, but it was the easiest one for me to find, and it will kind of get you a sense of what's going on here. So essentially on the left, you can see the Nintendo 64 ROM. So somebody tried taking 007 The World Is Not Enough and injecting that into the Sin and Punishment ROM. Now this will get into injection-based uh, virtual console emulation. For the most part, this is somebody taking an existing virtual console.wad file, WAD files for the Wii, and taking an N64 ROM and trying to mash them together. Now, all of the official released WAD files, all the officially released Virtual Console files, will play just fine in Dolphin as they would on a real Wii, which you can take these files and install them on a modded Wii if you have a modded Wii. This is a little bit different as it's trying to take games that Nintendo never officially released, at, at least on the Wii, and someone's trying to take the game from the Nintendo 64 and inject it so that it could be played through an official method. So for example, uh, Gex 3 injected into the Mario Golf ROM will work just fine, or at least it'll work without much in the way of any issues. So you can see that there's a couple of games uh, that will work. And the rest of these could work given a little bit of uh, you know, emulation magic or alteration of some of the tools and, and given some time, these could work over time, but for, for the most part, uh, it is what it is now. And the Wii U does have Virtual Console and people are doing injection-based emulation through Virtual Console for the Wii U for real modded Wii U's. And uh, we did cover this previously, um, Simu, the Wii U emulator that is super surprisingly playable. Uh, so in the future, I will also be doing uh, a virtual console tutorial for the Wii U uh, through Simu. But for now, this is just for the Wii and you can kind of get a sense uh, for the Nintendo 64 portion. As you can see from this list, there are more systems than just the Nintendo 64. Uh, so this is a complete area of emulation that you may not know exists, but I'm focusing on the Nintendo 64 because the rest of these systems are perfectly emulatable through RetroArch or other emulators in LaunchBox. It's really only the Nintendo 64 portion that has an issue, hence why I'm doing this tutorial. But if you have a real modded Wii and you would like to do some of these other systems, uh, then know that it's a possibility along with the Nintendo 64. Alrighty then, so with that said, I do have my Nintendo 64 imported. These are regular N64 or Z64 file extension games, but this is just running through RetroArch or, or Project 64. This has nothing to do with the WAD files. So I do have the .WAD files. I do have two platforms, official and injected. So let's go to Tools, Import, ROM files, 
We're going to click next. I'm going to add files. We're going to navigate to where I have first my official WAD files. Now, I don't quite remember if this is all the official Virtual Console games, but uh, this is, you know, what I have. So I'm going to click on a game, control A to highlight them all. And then we're going to click open with this list. We're going to click next the platform for imported ROMs. We are going to call this a, a, a custom platform. So we're going to type in Nintendo 64 and then I'm going to start typing in VC and then I'm going to then push the rest of it as we and official just to make my life simpler on the other end. For the scrape as we are going to select Nintendo 64 from the drop down. So we have our custom platform set and all of the metadata and images will be downloaded properly. Then we're going to click next, choose an emulator. We are going to select Dolphin and I have Dolphin 5.0 set up. If you don't have Dolphin set up, go ahead and click add. Head on over to the website. I download the Dolphin Nightlies. They run really well for me. Uh, so I added Dolphin 5.0 in here to denote at least you know, the, the Dolphin 5 version and later releases. You're going to click browse. You're going to navigate to where you have your Dolphin EXE uh, downloaded on your machine. The default command line parameters should automatically fill themselves in since we do have Dolphin uh, defaults already set. But if this doesn't get set for your default command line parameters in here in this box, go ahead and add dash B space dash E. And with the associated platforms, you can go ahead and add your your custom platforms if you would like uh, but this isn't completely needed uh, you you can get by without adding them but i i would go ahead and add them and make sure to check the default emulator box um, it will make your, your life simpler in the long run let's go ahead and click ok now it should have automatically filled in and say dolphin 5.0 go ahead and click next use the files in their current location we're going to download from the Launchbox Games database. It's going to log you into your Emu Movies account if you have your credentials inputted for Launchbox. Next, next, and then it's going to parse the list. You can double click a game to rename it if you would like, or just go ahead and press delete if you would like to remove it from this import list currently. Once you've got that done, go ahead and click finish. Go ahead and do the same thing for your uh, injected platform if that's something that you have. You can leave it all as one platform if you would like, but personally I like to split these between two platforms um, just for my sake. But you can leave these all as one platform. So once you have your system or systems imported, go ahead and right click a game and let's open up Dolphin. Go ahead and click on controllers. Now, if you have a real Wiimote attached through Bluetooth with a Mayflash Dolphin bar, if you have a classic controller connected to the bottom of your Wiimote through uh, the Bluetooth, you should be good to go. Otherwise, we need to emulate a Wiimote and classic controller, and then where it says emulate the Wii's Bluetooth adapter. Wiimote 1 emulated Wiimote. Uh, you can select a real Wiimote if that's something that you have set up, but I don't, so we are going to make sure it says emulated Wiimote. We're going to click configure, and down here where it says extension, we are going to uh, select classic controller, and then we're going to click configure here. Now, the rest of the Wiimote you can set up with a controller if you would like but we are mostly just concerned about the classic settings here. So essentially minus is select, plus is, is start. And then this, the sticks and the right stick, the triggers, the D-pad, everything you're gonna set up. You're just gonna click on one of the buttons and then you're gonna press the corresponding button on your controller. Now it may automatically be set, uh, but I set this up previously if I recall so just make sure everything is set up the way you want and you can also see your buttons your button presses in this window here so if you need to test your buttons to make sure that dolphin recognizes it if you're pressing the buttons and these the uh, these red sections here are lighting up you should be good to go and that should be it. You really only need to set the classic configuration in this case. 
Uh, if you would like to set up Wii and GameCube emulation, there is a tutorial for that specifically that I did create several months ago that I actually might need to update at this point. But once you have your controls set up, now you should be good to go. Let's double click on Bomberman Hero. You will need a classic controller. Dolphin's situation, uh, the classic controller is the easiest method. Um, it still may not be perfect emulation, but you'll know that it's, uh, if you try, have tried to emulate N64 in RetroArch or Project 64 in the past, uh, this is actually better. And granted, the scope of the games is a lot smaller. Obviously, I only have 21 official N64 Virtual Console games, but they run better than their counterparts with regular emulation. So that, that's pretty crappy, to be honest. But there isn't much we can do about it, I guess. So let's test one of the injected wads. Ah, so Mischief Makers may not work. Now, granted, this compatibility list may be slightly out of date. Like I said, this isn't the only compatibility list, but let's check if Mischief Makers will work. And some of the injected wads uh, may not have like all their settings set properly. Uh, there may be some oddness. So yeah, so this one, for example, is offset in a bad way. So this one I would classify as as not working. So even though they are stated to be working, uh, th at least by the compatibility list standards, uh, do note that there may be some settings that you may need to change. Uh, it only does refer technically to the emulation. The emulation works, but the saving may not work properly. So you will have to use save states instead. But really, um, I am more concerned about the official wads in this case. Just know that injection is a possibility, uh, but you, you may have spotty results. And do note that injection may work significantly better on a real Wii or the virtual Wii portion of a Wii U. So uh, yeah, see, as you can see, there's a little bit of graphical glitches here and there, and this may operate a lot better um, on a real Wii or a virtual Wii. Just want everyone to know that this is a possibility. So that's it. That's how you get the official and some injected virtual console N64 wads running through Dolphin in LaunchBox. If this tutorial helped you out at all, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials in the future. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment section below or head on over to the forums and make a thread there and Jason or myself or anyone from the community can help you out. If you are one of our Patreon producers, your name is now scrolling on screen. And if you would like to get your name in the producer credits in any one of our videos or into the Launchbox application, head on over to our Patreon link in the description below. At a minimum of $2 a month, you get early access to shows like RSS and anything else in the future. At higher tiers, you do start to get things like producer credits and Discord server access. So if you would like to help us out, that link is in the description below. My name is Brad. The link to my channel is in the description below. If you would like to see the content that I make over there, I do lots of video game related stuff. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, I'd appreciate a subscribe as well. Remember, Freaks and Geeks, to play more games, and we will see you next time. Have a good day.